Hi, I'm Obane Ijoma, and I'll be talking about listeriosis. So it's actually caused by listeria monocytogenes. It's a bacterial infection, um, very rare but deadly. So about two of ten people who come down with this infection eventually die. It's a current public health concern in the U.S. and because recently um, some states declared an outbreak of listeriosis. It's intracellular in nature, so it releases what we call lysins, and this helps it to invade cells and reside there. Five percent of adults are carriers with no symptoms, actually. And lysiria monocytogen is very tricky; continues to grow in refrigeration temperatures um, you wouldn't expect compared to all other um, bacteria. Transmitted transplacentally and through an infected bed canal. Also food born, so foods implicated here include unpasteurized dairy products, um, vegetables, and a host of other foods that have been outlined here. So a contaminated food to get into your gut system, get through the lymph nodes, to your liver and your spleen, and within the bloodstream, it makes its way to the brain and across the placenta into the fetus of a pregnant woman and it wrecks havoc there. So to diagnose listeriosis, you want to cut your blood samples of spinal fluid or amniotic fluid samples. Um, people can be asymptomatic sometimes too, so vaginal and stool cultures are actually not helpful to diagnose listeriosis. For a pregnant woman, the w for a pregnant woman who may have been exposed to listeria monocytogenes, you want to look through this outline to see if she has symptoms or not. And then if she does have symptoms, you want to know if they are feverish or not. And then if they are, you want to treat with ampicillin or obtain a placental culture for further um, diagnosis. Um, high risk groups, we are talking about older adults and these people are usually above the age of 50. And sometimes they can be on immunosuppressant drugs because of maybe one transplant or the other. But, and then, like I said, pregnant women and newborn, immunocompromised adults, and these people usually have chronic infections, chronic diseases, um, and alcoholism also, so puts them at risk. And then some people outside this group may be at risk because of cultural food preferences, so you have to watch out. And signs and symptoms to look out for, generally invasive bacteria, so we're talking about spreading throughout the GI system. So once you consume a food that has been exposed to listeria monocytogenes, within a period of four days to three weeks, you're expected to come down with symptoms that are mostly diarrhea and other forms of GI symptoms that may last like one to three days. You can have fever, muscle aches. Um, there's also elevated white blood cell count. In pregnant women, when you do that, um, for pregnant women, they can also be asymptomatic. And then other symptoms they may present can be fatigue, body aches. They may have bacteremia, abortion, premature delivery. Even the newborn can suffer sepsis and meningitis. Also, abscesses have been recorded in the newborn, and that's because of the white blood cell action. Other at risk groups get CNS symptoms because of its ability to make its way to the brain. So we have, we're looking at symptoms like stiff neck, convulsions. Even meningitis is the most common. Um, other people may not even have um, symptoms, or so people who are immunocompetent competent, may have mild um, GI issues. So to manage this, you want to treat with ampicillin, um, penicillin, generally antibiotics, and then provide supportive care for infected patients to help them get through this period of their life and also help them to adhere to their prescriptions and get well in due time. So those who are um, amongst this high-risk group but may not have um, symptoms um, ex um, expressed, uh, you may not necessarily test or treat them, but you want to cancel them and signs to expect. And within um, two months of exposure to contaminated foods, they are expected to return to the healthcare facility for treatment if they see the, if they get these signs. And then to prevent it, you want to heat foods thoroughly, refrigerate food at very low temperatures, avoid unpasteurized milk. Look out for food labelings, educate the public on proper food handling practices, safe hand washing, um, routine surveillance to inform the public on signs to look out for our foods to avoid when these outbreaks um, come forward. And also cross-contamination, that's very important. So here are some references that we have used for this presentation.
Thank you very much.